Viewers at home, you are welcome to my presentation on adjusted present value. Adjusted present value. If this is your first time of coming across my lectures, please click on the red subscribe button so that you'll be notified each time a new video is dropped on my channel. And if you are a returning subscriber, I want to say thank you. And God bless you. So, adjusted present value. Adjusted present value is the method used to appraise the project when business entity is considering an investment in a project that have different business risk and different financial risk from its current operation. A method used to appraise the project when business entity is considering an investment in a project that have different business risk and different financial risk from its current operation. That is, adjusted present value, APV, is used where the overall capital structure of the company changes. Where the overall capital structure of the company changes then APV is used. By capital structure, we mean the various sources of finance, which may include the debt and equity. Debt and equity. So, now, APV, I've told you that it's used where the overall capital structure of the company changes. APV is used where the overall capital structure of the company changes. APV consists of two different elements. APV, adjusted present value, consists of two different elements. Number one is base case NPV. Base case NPV. Base case NPV and financing impact. Financing impact these are the two aspects to APV number one is base case MPV and financing impact so APV is the value of GED project APV is the value of GED project why base case MPV is the value of all equity finance project value of all equity finance project while financing impact is financing side effects of the project so i've told you apv that means apv is equals to base case mpv base case mpv plus financing impact financing impact that is a pv base case mpv plus financing impact i've told you that base case mpv i've told you apv on its own is the value of jet project apv is value of jet project that is APV value of GH project why base case MPV is value of all equity finance project value of all equity finance project that is base case MPV value of all equity finance project and the financing impact is the present value of financing side effect. Present value, value of financing side effect. That is APV. Present value of financing side effect. I want to start with the base case. NPV base case NPV 
So what do we mean by base case and PV? Base case and PV. Base case and PV is the MPV of the project. When you ignore the way the project are to be financed. MPV of the project where you ignore the financing side effect of that project. That is base case MPV. Net present value of the project. Where you ignore the finance side effect is said to be the base case MPV. The assumption here is that you assume that the project is financed by all equity. I mean, you will assume that the project is all equity financed. To calculate base case MPV, anything that involves that, you ignore that. You assume it is all equity financed to calculate the base case MPV. I told you that it's the, the MPV of the project when ignoring the way the project are to be financed. The project should be discounted using the cost of equity. So you assume it is all equity financed. So the project should be discounted. Discount the project using the cost of equity. Cost of equity in an ungeared company. In an ungeared company. You discount the project. You are not going to use the weighted average cost of capital. You are going to use the cost of equity in an ungeared company. That means the better, the appropriate better to use should be the better of asset. Better, asset better. Asset better should be used. Should be used in capital asset pricing model formula. So for better understanding, I will advise you watch my lecture on capital asset pricing model. Then you should equally watch my lecture on the jerry, jerry, determination of appropriate beta. So no, we said beta of asset. Beta of asset is beta of equity times market value of equity over market value of equity plus market value of debt post tax then plus beta of debt times market value of debt post tax over the market value of equity plus the market value of debt post tax and where the market the beta of debt is not given we assume the debt is risk free so if debt is risk free that means the beta of debt will be zero if beta of debt is zero the formula that means if you multiply all this zero times all this then everything here becomes zero that means the formula becomes asset beta asset beta or beta of asset equal to beta of equity times value of equity over value of equity plus value of debt post tax so that is the formula that is in the formula so for better understanding please go over my lecture on capital structure capital structure especially the determination of appropriate beta to use for project finance i told you that you assume the project is all equity financed so if you assume it is all equity finance that means you are going to discount the project using the cost of equity in an ungeared company and the better to use in your capital asset pricing model formula should be the asset better, not equity better. So I've given you the formula for asset better. You know the cost of equity in capital asset pricing model is the risk free rate plus beta into market returns minus risk free rate. I've explained each of these variables in uh, on my lectures on capital asset pricing model so the better will be obtained from this formula you are going to ungear the investing company in order to obtain their asset better you are going to ungear the investing company 
that is the investing company will be taken as the proxy company so it is the better of the proxy company that will be used so in this as a capital asset pricing model formula this will be the better of the proxy company not the better of the company in question so i want to look at the financing impact remember i've told you that the APV comprises of two components. There are, there are two components to APV. Number one is the base case MPV, and the second one is financing impact. Now I want to focus on that financing impact now. Financing impact. Financing impact. This financing impact, there are two sides or two aspects to it. Now, number one is issue cost. Issue cost issue cost and number two is tax relief or tax sheet on interest tax relief on interest these are the two aspects to financing impact we are going to look at now number one is issue cost and number two is tax relief on issue cost this issue cost we are going to categorize that into two equity issue cost equity issue cost and debt issue cost debt issue cost these are two aspects so i've told you that financing impact will be broken down into two. Financing impact will be divided into two. Number one is issue cost, and the second one is tax relief on interest. And the issue cost will be divided into two, equity issue cost and debt issue cost. Note that equity issue cost is not tax deductible. Equity issue cost is not, this one is not, tax deductible why debt issue cost is tax deductible debt issue cost is tax deductible equity issue cost is not is not tax deductible but debt issue cost is tax deductible now, I want you to note all financing impact cash flows are low risk. They should be discounted using either. I'm telling you that all financing impact cash flows they are of low risk and they should be discounted. Financing, financing impact, impact cash flows, financing impact cash flows should be be discounted discounted using either either one of these either the cost of debt the cost of debt cost of debt or using the risk risk the risk free rates the risk free rate financing impact cash flows should be discounted using either the cost of debt or the risk free rate no i broke down the financing impact into two number one the issue cost and the second one is the tax relief on issue cost and the issue cost was further broken down into two equity issue cost and debt issue cost i'm telling you that equity issue costs are not tax deductible unless stated otherwise unless you are told it is tax deductible you should assume that equity is not tax deductible why debt issue costs are tax deductible unless stated otherwise note the finance required 
for a planned investment is usually reported net. The finance required for a planned investment is usually reported, reported net of issue cost. And the finance raised have to cover the issue cost. So you will need to gloss it up to reflect the issue cost. No, the finance required is usually reported net of issue cost. So there will be need for you to gloss it up to reflect the issue cost. Now, you will need to gloss up the debt component of the capital before calculating the interest on debts. You will need to gloss up the debt component of the capital before calculating the interest on debts or sum up the principal component of the debts and the issue, and the issue cost of the debts so before calculating the interest. So take note of that. So the present value of issue cost, present value of issue cost, present value of issue cost, and that you are going to have here, here, then you have the items, then you may have cash flows, cash flows, then the discount factor, and the present value. So, issue cost should be treated as an outflows, outflows in year zero. Issue cost should be treated as an outflows in year zero. So we have year zero, issue cost, both equity issue cost and debt issue cost, the amount involved. Then the discount factor, you may use the risk free rate. You may use the risk free rate or cost of the debt or the interest rate of the debt. So, issue cost, then the discount factor, the present value. Then, I'll tell you that debt issue cost attacks deductible. You should try to watch the timing of the cash flows. If taxes are payable in the same year they arise, then that means the tax on the debt issue cost will be treated in year zero. If taxes are payable in the same year they arise, the tax relating to the debt issue cost will be treated in year zero, since this issue cost relates to year zero. But if taxes are payable a year in arrear, if it is one year delay, then the debt interest Interest on issue cost now. Interest on debt issue cost. If it is one year delay, then that means you are going to have N to be year one. But if it is payable in the same year, N will be zero. But if it is one year delay, N will be year one. So you have this uh, interest on debt issue cost. Interest, I mean, cash relief. Tax relief, sorry, this will be tax relief on debt issue cost. Tax relief on debt issue cost. Tax relief on debt issue cost. So, I've told you that if tax is payable the same year, then this tax relief will be treated in year zero. But if it is one year delay, then you are going to have your end to be one. Then the discount factor, then you have the present value. So when you sum it up, this minus this plus this, then you have minus this. That is the present value, PV of issue cost. Present value of issue cost. Then I want to look at the adjusted present value itself. Adjusted, adjusted present value, APV. Adjusted present value. I've told you that the first thing you compute is the base case NPV. Base case NPV. The calculation of base case NPV, the cash flows to use for base case NPV is the same as the cash flows for the normal net present value in investment decision. The normal cash flows for NPV calculation will still be used in your base case NPV. Then your base case NPV, then we have PV of issue cost, 
as calculated PV of issue cost. PV of issue cost as calculated above. PV of issue cost as calculated there. You have PV of tax relief on interest. PV of tax relief on interest. On interest. Interest on loans or debt. So the PV of the tax relief on interest. When you sum up the three, it will give you the base case and PV. So I want to take a work example. I want to take a work example on the APV. Calculation of APV. APV. So this is the question. Randy PS is a company. This lecture is part one. This is the part one of my lectures. In part two, I will examine APV. I will incorporate the subsidized loan or ship loans in, the, in APV calculation in part two. I will equally solve comprehensive examination questions. So, after this part one, part two, I will incorporate a subsidized loan or uh, a ship loan in the calculation of APV. So, the question now. Randing PSC is a company currently engaged in the manufacture of baby equipment. It wishes to diversify into manufacture of snowboards of snowboards. I want to know that you will apply, you need to, you only apply APZ where there are diversification. That is, where you are diversifying into a different risky or risk area. So it is then that you calculate APV. You are given the investment details. The company's equity beta is 1.27. You know, the company is a randing. A ra the name of the company is Randing PSC. They engage in manufacture of baby equipment, but wishes to diversify into the manufacture of snow of manufacture of snowboards. So this is the new area they want to diversify into. That may be better to use now. That is, this is we are going to take this as a project company, as I've said earlier. The, the better to use must be the better of manufacture of snowboards, not better of the manufacture of baby equipment. The better manufacture of snowballs should be used. The company's equity beta is 1.27, and it's currently, and its current debt to equity ratio is 25, ratio of 25 to 75. However, the company journey ratio will change. The company journey ratio will change as a result of the new project. Firms involved in snowboard manufacture have an average, have an average equity beta of 1.19 and an average debt to equity ratio of 30 to 70. You know, this better, no firm involved in snowboard manufacturers have an average equity better of this, an average debt to equity ratio of 30 to 70. So, those information, those information are only needed for asset beta. I've told you that the asset beta you will need is the asset beta of the company engaging in the manufacture of snowboard. So we are going to adjust this equity beta. We are given the equity beta of 1.19. So you will need to adjust it to obtain the asset beta. So to understand Jerry and on Jerry, please go and rewatch my lecture on the appropriate beta 
or Jerry or Capital Structure. So you don't need to reject this time around. I've told you that the better to use should be the asset better. After obtaining the asset better, you don't need to reject it to obtain the equity better of uh, of Rand DPS, that is, of a uh, baby equipment. You don't need to reject. You only need the asset better. Just on J8, that is what you need to obtain the asset better. When you're on J8, that means you remove the debt element. Then you'll be left with asset better, that is, the equity component. So, assume that the debt is risk-free. Assume that the, re the debt is risk-free, that the risk free rate is 10 percent and that the expected return from the market portfolio is 16 percent the new project will involve the purchase of a new machinery for a cost of eight hundred thousand dollar net of issue costs purchase of new machinery that will cost eight hundred thousand that will be the outlay for the project which will produce annual cash inflows of 450000 for three years at the end of this time. It will have no scrap value. Corporation tax is payable in the same year at a rate of 33%. That is the corporation tax rate. The machine will attract tax allowable depreciation of 25% per annum. In Nigeria context, we call it capital allowance. You don't call it capital allowance or you call it cap, uh, tax allowable depreciation. 25% per annum on reducing balance basis with a balancing allowance at the end of the project life when the machine is scrapped. Continuation of the question. The financing details. You are given the financing details. Then, you have the new investment will be financed as follows. Bonds, redeemable in three years' time, 40%. Right issue of equity, 60%. The issue costs are 4% on the gross equity. Four, I mean 4% on the gross equity issued and 2% on the gross debt issued. Assume the debt issue costs are tax deductible. You have been told that debt are tax deductible required. Calculate the adjusted present value of the project. You have to calculate the APV of the project. So that is the question now. So we want to solve solution. So you want to calculate the APV. I've told you that there are three aspects to APV. Number one is base case MPV. And I've told you there are two aspects. Number one is base case MPV. And number two is financing impact. I've told you that financing impact will be divided into two. The issue cost and tax relief on interest. So we want to compute the base case MPV now. The base case MPV. I've told you that you are going to assume the project is all equity financed. You are going to assume it is all equity financed. To assume it is all equity financed, I said the cost of capital to use must be the cost of equity. So we want to calculate the cost of equity. I'm telling you that you are going to on the business area uh, of the investment. You on it. I've told you that that business area of the investment will be assumed to be the project company. If you have watched my lectures on the on the on Jerry, so you determine the beta of asset. I've told you that the beta of asset is value of, uh, beta of equity multiplied by the value of equity. Value of equity plus value of debt post tax. So that is the formula for asset beta to use. So I've told you that you need the parameter from the business area of the company, the business area of the project. Now you are given the information. 
the company equity beta is 1.27 and you know you want to invest in manufacture of snowboard that is the area you want to invest in manufacture of snowboard the wishes to diversify you were told it wishes to diversify into the manufacture of snowboards that is the area you want to invest that means you want to you will need to unjear that equity better equity better of that business area so now let's go back to the question to obtain those area the company equity better is 1.27 and its current debt to equity ratio is 25 to 75 however the company's gearing ratio will change as a result of the new project the firm involved in the snowboard manufacture so that is the business area of the project have an average equity beta of 1.19 so you have your equity beta equity beta beta of equity is given to be 1.19 1.19 so if the beta of equity is 1.19 and you were also told 1.19 and an average debt to equity ratio of 30 to 70. Debt to equity, that means debt will be 30, equity will be 70, respectively. Debt first, followed by equity. So the market value of equity, debt is 30, so that means the value of debt is 30, and value of equity will be 70. Debt to equity ratio of 30 to 70. So from the question, Assume that the debt is risk-free, that the risk-free rate is 10% and that the expected return from the market portfolio is 16%. Then, you are given the tax rate. The, corp the corporation tax is payable in the same year at the rate of 33%. Tax rate is... 33%. Tax rate is 33%. So tax, tax, 33%. So substituting into the above formula, equity beta, beta of equity is 1.19 multiplied by market value of equity, which is 70, over value of equity 70 plus value of debt. Debt is 30 into 1 minus tax. The tax rate is 33%, which is 0 0.33. So, if you have 1.19 times 70, and that will give us 83.3, then if you subtract 1 minus 0 0.33, that will give us 0 0.67. 0 0.67 times 30, then that will give us 20.1. 20.1 plus 70, then you have 90.1. So you now divide. Remember, this is asset beta from the formula. Beta of asset equals to this. Now, you now have 83.3 83 .3 divided by 90.1. That will give us 0 0.92. Therefore, asset beta is 0 0.92. Now, having obtained the asset beta, you now go back to the formula, the capital asset pricing model formula. I've told you that using the capital asset pricing model, the cost of equity is the risk free rate plus beta, which is uh, RM minus RF. Our beta has been obtained to be 0 0.92. So what is our risk free rate and what is the market return? Have we obtained our asset beta? You go back to the question. So let's go back to the question. You were told that the risk free rate is 10%. The risk free rate is 10% and that the risk free rate is 10% and that the expected return from the market is 
portfolio is 16 percent risk free is 10 percent market return 16 percent so so r f is 10 percent 10 percent plus our better as obtained above is 0 0.92 RM is 16% minus RF, which is 10. So we have 10 plus 10 plus. Now, 16 minus 10 will be 6. 6 times 0 0.92. And that will give us 5.52. 5.52 plus 10. Plus uh, 10. Then we have 15.52. This is 5.52. When you add it to 10, we have 15.52 percent. Therefore, cost of equity is approximately equal to 16 percent to the nearest whole number. 16 percent to nearest whole number. That is the cost of equity. So this is the appropriate cost of equity to use in our project evaluation. Have we obtained the appropriate cost of equity? The next thing, you want to calculate the base case MPV. To calculate the base case or MPV, then we will need the cash flows. The cash flows for the investment. Now, let's go back to the question in order to identify the cash flows to use in the investment or for the purpose of base case MPV calculation. Now, what are the appropriate cash flows? Now, we have ungeared the equity better, so we don't need those information. So we now go back to the information about the project. The new project will involve the purchase of new machines. The new project will involve the purchase of new machines. new machinery for a cost of 800,000 for a cost of 800,000 net of issue cost net of issue cost which we produce which we produce annual cash inflows of 450,000 which will produce annual cash inflows of 450,000. For three years. For three years. At the end of this time, it will have no scrap value. At the end of this time, it will have no scrap value. Corporation tax is payable in the same year at a rate at a rate of 33%. It is payable same year at a rate of 33%. The machines will attract tax allowable depreciation of 25% per annum on a straight line basis now let's compute the depreciation tax allowable depreciation or capital allowance tax allowable depreciation i'm telling you that you don't call it tax allowable depreciation or you call it capital allowance capital allowance so we have yeah, we have to written down allowance. Then we have tax, tax relief or tax savings. Tax relief or tax savings at the tax rate given is 33%. At 33%. So, the first year, then we have year one, 
the cost of the asset. The cost of the asset is 800,000. That is the cost. The tax allowable depreciation rate is given to be 25%. Tax allowable depreciation of 25% per annum on reducing balance with a balance allowance at the end of the project life. You were told is 25%. So now, taxable depreciation now, which is capital allowance. Tax uh, capital allowance at 25%. You calculate 25% or you call it tax allowable depreciation. 25% of 800,000 and that will give us 200,000. If you apply tax rate of 33% on that 200,000, then you have 66,000 as the tax allowable depreciation. Then if you subtract 200,000 from 800,000, you have a tax written down value of 600,000. Then in year two again, you compute the capital allowance or tax allowable depreciation, which is 25% of 600,000. Since you were told it's on redu reducing balance basis, not straight line. If it's a straight line, then the 200,000 will have been applied annually. So when you subtract 150 from 600, You'll be left with 450. If you calculate tax on the capital allowance, that is tax allowable depreciation, tax of at the rate of 33%, then you'll be having 49,500, approximately 50. Now using two places of decimal. I mean, nearest whole number. In year three, you know the project will last for three years. In year three, you were told that it will not have a reducing balance. It will not have a scrap value, I mean. Tax, uh, tax allowable depreciation of 25% per annum on, the, on reducing balance basis with a balancing allowance at the end of the project line when the machine is scrapped. And you were told it will not have no scrap value. You were told at the end of this time, it will have no scrap value. So at the end of year today, it will not have a scrap value. So that means it will only have a balancing allowance. Balancing allowance. So in year three now, you have balancing allowance. Balancing. Balancing allowance. Which, is, which will be 450,000. So then the scrap value will be need. So if you apply tax rate of 30%, on the 450,000, 33%, I mean, 33% of 450,000, that will be appropriately equal to 149. That is tax relief on taxable depreciation, tax allowable depreciation. So that is one of the cash flows. Then, two, you want to calculate with the base case MPV. Base case. NPV, base case NPV. Remember the project life is three years. So it is three years. So we have years, year one, year two, and year three. So dollar and thousand. Then year zero. So we have one. You have outlay. Outlay. The amount you want to invest in the project is eight hundred thousand. The new project will involve the purchase of a new machinery for a cost of eight hundred thousand. That eight hundred thousand will be treated as an outflow in year zero. Then you have annual cash flows, annual cash inflows. 
annual cash inflows, the project will fetch 450,000 annually, which will produce annual cash inflows of 450,000 for three years. Cash inflows of 450,000 since I've hit three zero, so this will be 800. Cash inflows of 450,000 annually. This cash inflows, you will need to compute the tax payable on that. Tax payable on the cash inflows at 33%. You know the tax rate is 33%. And you have been told that tax is payable the same year. Tax is payable the same year. So, that do have, okay. You have corporation tax is payable in the same year at a rate of 33%. Same year. So, now, let's compute the tax. 33% of 450. 450, 33%. And that will give us 149 approximately. 149 annually. 149. 149. That is 33% of 450. 33% of 450. 33% of 450. So same year. But if it were payable in a year, a year in area, or if it is one year delay, this task used in year one will have been used in year two. The one for year two will be for year three. Why it will lead to extension to year four? The one for year three will not be payable in year four. But since it is payable in the same year, then that task will be used the same year. Then, after the tax, remember we have tax savings on capital allowance. Tax savings on capital allowance or tax allowable depreciation, tax relief, tax relief on taxable depreciation. And that has been calculated. So I we got 66 in year one, 50 in year two, year three, 149. So we have 66 in year one, 50 for year two, 149 tax savings tax relief which will be positive then the net cash flows net cash flows net cash flows here you have 800 450 minus 149 plus 66. Then you have 367. 367. In year 2, 450 minus 149 plus 50. Then you have 351. In year 3, you have 450 minus 149 plus 149. Then you have 450. That is the net cash flows. Then you now discount the cash flows using the cost of equity as calculated. And our cost of equity, we've obtained 16%. We've obtained 16% as our cost of equity. 16%. You are going to discount the project using that 16% in order to obtain the base case NPV. In order to obtain the base case NPV, we oh, yeah, have discount factor. Discount factor at 16%. So we assume the project is financed with only equity. So year one, then we have year zero, it will be one. In year one, you have 0 0.862. In year two, we have 0 0.743. And in year three, we have 0 
You now calculate the present value of that. What will be the present value? 800 times, sorry, this is negative. Minus 800 times 1 will be minus 800. 367 times 0 0.862, and that will give us 316. 351 times 0 0.743, and that will give us 261. Four fifty times zero point six four one, and that will give us two eight eight. You now sum it up. You sum up everything. This plus this plus this minus this. That will give us the base case and PV. So the total will be. The total is uh, the the PV. The total of our PV is sixty-five thousand. Sixty-five thousand positive. That is our PV. Since our we have calculated our base case MPV. Then the next section is financing impact. Financing impact. I've told you that for the financing impact, you have two aspects to that. Number one is issue cost. And number two is tax savings on interest. Issue cost and tax savings on interest. Go back to the question. We want to calculate the issue cost. Issue cost. Issue cost. So from the question, you were told that Rodney PSC is a company currently engaged in manufacturers of baby equipment. It wishes to diversify into the manufacture of snowballs. That is the beginning of the question. Under the investment duty, the company's equity beta is 1.27 and its currently and its current debt to equity ratio is 25 to 75. However, the company's jerry ratio will change as a result of the new project. First, involving the snowball manufacturer has an average equity beta of 1.19 and average debt to equity ratios of 30 to 70. Now, let's go back to where you have investment. The new project will involve the purchase of new machinery for a cost of $800,000 net of issue cost, which will, be, which will produce annual cash inflows of $450,000 for three years. At the end of this time, it will have no square value. All those information have been considered. Corporation tax is payable in the same year at the rate of 33%. It has been used. The machine will attract that Thus, a liable depreciation of 25% on reducing balance with balancing allowance at the end of the project line when the machine is scrapped. Now, those information have been used in the calculation of base case MPV. Now, let's go back to financing impact. We want to look at the financing implication. The new investment will be financed as follows. Bonds redeemable in three years time at 40 percent right issue of equity at 60 percent so we want to determine you have been given the proportion that are bonds 40 percent and those ones that are equity to be 60 percent i remember you were go given 800 percent 800 000 i mean net of issue cost so issue cost now let's have that of bonds which is 40 percent of 800,000. Remember, you were told that this 800,000 is net of issue cost. Then equity. Equity is 60% of 800,000. 
Remember, the 800,000 was given net of issue cost. So in that case, to calculate the issue cost, go back to the question. The issue cost are 4% on the gross equity, gross equity issued, and 2% on gross debt issued. Issue cost of equity is 4%, and that of debt is 2% on gross debt issued. But the amount you are given is net. This 800,000 is net. So 40% of that is net. So since bonds, the issue cost, if it is net, if issue cost of debt is 2%, 2%, 2 over 100, and if it is net, that means this is equivalent to 98% because the issue cost of 2% have been removed. So now you want to determine that issue cost. So we have over 98, not over 100, since it was reported net. That of equity, the issue cost of equity was given to be 4%. And this is net. And what we need, we want to determine the issue cost. So if this is net, 60% of this is net, that means the, if the issue costs have been subtracted, that is why it is net. It is net because issue costs have been subtracted, which is 4%. If 4 is removed from 100%, then you'll be left with 96%. That means the issue cost of equity is equivalent to 96%. So to determine that issue cost, it will be 4 over 96. Now, 4 over 96. That is issue cost. So now, our issue cost now, 40% of 800,000, that gives us 320,000. Then the issue cost now times 2 divided by 98. Then we have 6,531 approximately. 6,531. That of equity is 60% of 800,000. 60% of 800,000. Then times 4 divided by 96. Then you have 20,000. So when you sum it up, 20,000 plus 6,531, that will be 26,531. That is our issue cost. That is our issue cost. How we determine the issue cost? The next thing is to discount the issue cost to obtain its present value. You want to calculate the present value of issue cost. Present value of issue cost. Remember, you have been told that uh, the, the assuming the debt issue cost are tax deductible. Debt issue costs are tax deductible. You have been told. Assume that debt issue cost are tax deductible. Assume that debt issue cost are tax deductible. So if debt is tax deductible now, tax, you calculate the tax on debt issue cost. Now how much will be the tax on debt issue cost? Tax that will be deducted. Tax on debt issue cost. And note, no interest rate is given in this question. So if interest rate is not given, then we assume you have been told that debt is risk-free. So then you apply the risk-free rate, so which is 10%. 10% of debt issue cost. And the debt issue cost is 6,531. 6,531. So if you compute 6%, I mean 10% of that, then 10% of debt issue cost, that will be Okay, that will give you, sorry, the tax, tax on, the, on debt issue cost, tax on de uh, debt issue cost. We are given tax rate to be 33%, 33% of 6,531. Since debt, the tax, no tax on debt issue cost. So the tax rate is 33%. Let's calculate 33% of 6,531. 
that will give us 2155. So now we to calculate the PV, PV of issue cost. PV of issue cost. So to compute the PV of issue cost, there you have here. We have items, then you may have cash flows, the discount factor at you use the risk free rate, then the PV, the present value. So yeah, zero. You have the issue cost. I've told you that your issue cost will be treated as an outflow in year zero. How much is our issue cost? The issue cost as calculated above is 26,531. 26,531. Outflows in year zero. Discount factor at 10% will be one. So the present value of that will still be the same. 26,000. 531 outflows. Then you are zero as well. Remember, you have been told that tasks are payable the same year. Tasks are payable the same year. You have been told. So if this issue cost arises in year zero and taxes will be paid the same year, then you have a tax. Tax uh, tax relief on issue cost. Tax relief on issue cost. Tax relief on issue cost. As calculated above, we got 2155, 2155. It is still year zero because tax will be payable in the same year. But if it is one year delay, this will have been year one. If it is one year delay, then we will have put year one here. So for year zero now, the pre-B will be, this factor will be one. So if you multiply that, you have 2,155. So what is the present value of the issue cost now? Minus 26,531 plus, 20, uh, plus 2,155. There you have 24,000 minus 24,000. Minus 24,376. So that is the PV of issue cost, 24,376. Then you are left with the second aspect, which is the PV of tax relief on interest. PV, PV of tax relief, PV of tax relief on interest. Present value of tax relief on interest. I've told you that to compute the interest, that you will need to gross the bonds. You are going to use the gross amount of the debt. You were given the bonds to be 40% of 800,000 and it was net. So, bonds now, bonds. 40% of 800,000 and that is 320,000. This 320,000 was reported was reported net. Then that mean the issue cost now which is you were told issue cost on debt is 2 2 over 98 of 320,000. That gives us 6,000 5,31 When you sum it up you have 326,531 That is the gross debt Now, how much will be the tax? I mean interest on the debt Interest on debt now You are given the interest rate which is the risk free, uh, free, risk free rate of 10% of 326 
five three one. So if you calculate that, the the interest on debt that is thirty two thousand six five three dollar. That is the interest. If this is the interest. How much will be the tax relief on interest? You know, this interest will be paid annually. That is the interest that will be paid annually. How much will be the tax relief on interest? Tax. Tax relief on interest. On interest. Our tax rate is 33%. We have 33% of 32,000. 33% of 32,653. 33% of 32,653. And we got 10,776. 10,776. So the standard to obtain the present value. So we have PV, uh, we have year. You have item. We have cash flows. So, you know, since this interest will be payable annually, that means it will be paid from year one to three, since the project lasts for three years. And the taxes are payable the same year. So, the interest is 10,776. That is in, uh, tax relief on interest. Ten thousand seven seven six. Then the cumulative discount factor at ten percent, the risk free rate, and for year one to three, we have two point four eight seven. So what will be the present value of that? Then the present value. It's approximately equal to $26,800. Then the next thing, we have determined the base case MPV. We have determined the PV of issue cost. We've equally determined the PV of tax relief on interest. So we can compute the adjusted present value. So our adjusted present value, adjusted present value, adjusted present Value. After that, your adjusted present value APV, you say we have base case MPV, and that was obtained to be $65,000. $65,000. Base case MPV is $65,000. That is our base case MPV. Base case MPV is $65,000. Then we also have the PV of issue cost. PV of issue cost is 24376 negative. 24376 That is PV of issue cost. 24376 negative. 24376. Then we also have PV. By PV, I mean the present value of tax relief on interest, which is 26,800. PV of tax relief on interest, which is 26,800. You now sum up the three. You sum it up to obtain the 
adjusted present value. So adjusted, our adjusted present value, when you sum it up, it will be 67,424. 67,424. So part two, I will consider the, I will incorporate the subsidized loan or ship loans. I will call this all examination question. The question I've just solved is obtained from ACC study test by Kipler, Advanced Financial Management. Please, if this is your first time of coming across my channel, click on the red subscribe, red subscribe button. And besides it, you will see a notification bell icon. Please go ahead to click it so that you will be notified each time I drop a new video. Thanks.